Today's read aloud is titled, Rosa's Bus, The Ride to Civil Rights, written by Joe S. Kittinger, illustrated by Stephen Walker. When bus number 2857 rode off the assembly line in 1948, no one cheered, no one paid attention, no one knew that one day, bus number 28. Five seven would be famous. The bus left the General Motors factory in Michigan and headed to Terre Haute, Indiana, where it carried folks for several years before moving south to Alabama in 1954. Around the time the bus arrived in Montgomery, the U.S. Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. ruled that separate schools for black children and white children were unequal. The Civil Rights Movement was beginning to roll. By now, bus number 2857 was six years old. Its yellow paint had faded some, but inside, 10 seats back, there was a newly painted movable sign. It read, colored. White people climbed aboard bus number 2857, paid a dime, and took a seat in the front of the bus. Black people climbed aboard the bus, paid a dime, but often had to walk back down the steps and go to the rear door. Even if it was raining, even if their legs were broken, even if they were cold and the steps were hard to climb. That's just the way things were. White sat up front, colored in back. Black people were called colored back then. That's just the way things were. When the white seats filled, an entire row of black people had to stand up. So one white person could sit down. Black people weren't allowed to share a row with white people. That's just the way things were. If black people didn't stand up, the bus driver could have them arrested and they have to pay a fine. Those were the rules called Jim Crow laws. That's just the way things were. Bus number 2857 traveled the streets of Montgomery carrying people to work, to church, and to the store. Black people needed the bus. The bus company needed black people to ride. Jingle jangle, dime upon dime. Dimes kept the buses in business. On the evening of December 1st, 1955, a winter day like any other, bus number 2857 chugged along the streets stopping at corners, brakes screeching, doors hissing. Miss Rosa Parks boarded the bus. After a long day of sewing and pressing clothes, she took a seat behind the sign. At the next stop, all the front seats were filled and a white man was left standing. The bus driver motioned for Rosa and three other black passengers in her row to stand up so the white man could sit down. Three passengers did as the driver ordered. Rosa sat still. The busload of people moaned and groaned, anxious to get home. The driver said, move or I'll have you arrested. Still, Rosa sat. That winter day, the police took Rosa to jail. Did you hear? Did you hear? Rosa was arrested! The news raced around town like a field on fire. Meetings were held in homes and at churches. Black leaders had been waiting for this moment, waiting for something to happen on the buses. Something that would give people the courage to change the way things were. They printed flyers that read, 
please stay off all buses on Monday. On Monday morning, when bus number 2857 pulled up to its first stop, few black faces were among those who climbed on board. The same was true for every bus in Montgomery. At every stop that day, a bus boycott had begun, led by a young minister named Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, the great glory of American democracy is the right to protest for right. Black people throughout the city vowed to avoid riding the buses until no one could tell them to move from their seats. The bus boycott lasted a week, then a month. Black people walked to work, to church, and to the store. Their feet got sore, but they still walked. Some people who had cars offer rides to others. Black taxi drivers offer special fares until they were stopped by those Jim Crow laws. The boycott went on and on. No dimes jingle jangled in the coin box. Day after day, week after week, month after month. Bus number 2857 rode down the street with plenty of empty seats. Black people walk and walk, wearing holes in the soles of their shoes. They walk for 382 days. That's how long they boycotted the buses. A year after the boycott began, the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. ruled that the way things were in Montgomery must change. Black people could no longer be forced to give up their seats for white people. They could sit in any seat they wanted on the bus. The Civil Rights Movement had won an important victory. Bus number 2857 was full again. It ran many more years on the streets of Montgomery as the Civil Rights Movement rolled on and on. Then. The city replaced its old buses with ones that were shiny and new. Bus number 2857 was put out of service. A man bought the old bus to save it from the junkyard. Summer and winter, year after year, bus number 2857 sat in a field. The engine got ripped out and windows got broken. Instead of people, the old bus held tools and lumber. A pine tree dripped sap on the roof. Its metal rusted. Bus number 2857 had been forgotten. Or so it seemed. Donnie Williams remembered he owned the bus in the field. Mr. Williams waited half his life, more than 30 years, for the right time. A time when people cared enough about the bus to clean off the sap, scrape off the rust, and replace the broken windows. 55 years after it rolled off the assembly line, bus number 2857 returned to Michigan. This time, people cheered when the bus rolled into the Henry Ford Museum. Today, Bus number 2857 welcomes people of all colors, those who remember the days when they sat behind the sign and those who sat in front. It welcomes people who remember the way things were and people who only have heard the stories. Think about bus number 2857. Imagine where it has been and where we have yet to go.